Hi, everybody. Hi. It was originally our parents that introduced us to Shangri-La um, because my father was here with the UN and they would travel with my mother together to the area. And when they went to Shangri-La, my mother, she fell in love with the area. She felt this really deep connection. So it was since then, you know, she started an NGO called the Yunnan Mountain Heritage Foundation, which does work with ecotourism, handicraft development. They have a free library and free programs for the local citizens. So she really inspired us um, to do something in the area. And since we would travel there, eventually we started meeting these producers. And we were really surprised at the great products that they were making. Um, one example is that we were traveling through Kunming, through the airport, and we met this coffee maker. And he had this little coffee shop. And we were like, wow, your coffee is fantastic. And he was like, well, you know, I'm actually a head farmer. Why don't you come to my farm and visit me there? And maybe we can do some cooperation. So we went to the farm and we, we saw the farmers, we talked with them. And what struck us was that they were really poor in the area and having a very hard time to sell, you know, their products. It's quite a long value chain from producer to marketing to distribution. So we felt, you know, there was opportunity for us to help and maybe start a social enterprise um, that can help with marketing and distribution. So, you know, we're kind of in a gray area. We're not an NGO, we're not a business, we're a social business. And that's something that's quite new for China. So people still wonder, you know, like, what are you doing exactly? Like, foreigners know what a social business is, but it's quite new to Chinese people. So, you know, we found that for a social business, we really need the balance, especially with a startup, between the three of us and our three different skill sets. So my background is design. I worked in advertising for multinationals in China. Alia worked with international development organizations, and Safi with agriculture, and it has a background in Chinese. Um, as Sarah mentioned, it is definitely very lucky for what we've been trying to do and being in startup phase that there are three of us and we have individual passions and interests. Um, so I am a film and economist. I started off working in Kenya and Malawi and then did projects in Bhutan, Vietnam. Um, and I came across the idea of social enterprise. You know, it comes up quite a lot. It sounds exciting. It sounds like a great idea. It intuitively felt like a great thing to try to do. And that idea of the triple and bottom line, wow, you know, that there's financial, economic, and social indicators. I had this vision of companies with accounting sheets that were, you know, doing metrics of their social, you know, financial and um, environmental achievement. And so, then we had our great ideas, and we thought, well, beekeeping in Shangri-La, you know, it's a very romantic idea. It's this beautiful, pristine place, high in the Himalayan plateau, it's culturally diverse, people are still living their traditional community cultures, but it is very poor. And so, hmm, we thought, you know, we could, we could do something. Maybe a brand selling honey. Um, you know, we'll do community development projects in tandem with this and make sure that we are providing a market um, and enhancing the back end, and making it more environmentally sustainable and more culturally, you know, protecting the cultural diversity. Um, and we, we face, of course, many challenges. And a quick background was one of the ones we faced before we even started with our full-blown concept of our social enterprise. Um, so we did a project in a place called Hamabu, which is, you know, a neighbor of Shangri-La. It's in a very beautiful place, wildflowers everywhere. And they said, okay, we'd like to try beekeeping. And so we invited a Chinese beekeeping professor to come, and he gave some lectures on beekeeping. We supported 20 beehives for five farm families, and it looked good. It looked good. 
so that we started in the spring, and by the winter, at the end of the winter, there were no beehives left. Some had flown away, some hadn't quite made it, you know, oh gosh. So we looked into it, but what had happened? What went wrong? There were a number of problems in our process. One of them was that we didn't totally understand that the community had decided not to have the individuals have the hives, but rather to hold them communally. And so no one was taking responsibilities, the cows knocked them over, lots of things were difficult. And we thought, hmm, well, you know, it's not a success, but we feel like more is possible. Um, and so we came, we came back and thought, okay, we need more backing, and we need to try this, having learned from these mistakes. And so we went about looking for funding. And we kind of suffered from a Goldilocks situation looking at social entrepreneur funding. Some people said we were too commercial. Some people said we're not commercial enough. Some people said we are too small. Some people said, oh, we're too big for what we do. <laughs> and finally, we stumbled upon what work for us, which was that we could find grant funding to support our development projects. And we were able to get some angel investment seed money to start building our brand and getting our products to market. Um, and so off we went. Um, but what we had then, so for the grant side, that was just to do the social and environmental parts. We had to account um, for what we achieved in line with development best practice, having learned from our mistakes, and, you know, lots of success. You know, farmers that we trained in the first year of our version two project are now training other farmers and are asking us for, you know, more advanced skill sets like breeding queens. Um, and that's been great. And then on the other side, we have money that, you know, we're accountable to the investors. You know, we, we can't, we have to stay afloat as a business. We have to make sure that we grow, that there's some return that we can offer these people that believe in us. Um, and so there we've had kind of a separated triple bottom line where we're accounting for the different pieces in different, um, in different kind of separate spaces. But just because they're separate doesn't mean there's not symbiosis and there's not cross-pollination. In fact, our uh, business really informs our project. You know, we do trainings with the farmers that are learning the beekeeping to advise them on what their options are in terms of being part of the value chain. You know, how can they advance their position? You know, how can they get their product to market? Do they want to be wholesalers and work with us? Do they want to do retail with tourists? Um, because we know now how to sell honey. Um, and then on the other side, the project has really informed our business. It's helped us to understand the risks of agriculture. You know, you can't do things overnight. Any kind of change you're advocating, it has to have a several year um, vision at least. And you have to be adaptive and have to keep going. So it's been great. I mean, our business is about balance so far balance between three siblings, but also balance between different parts of what we do. I'm going to hand it over to Sefi. Hi everybody. Uh, as Summer pointed out, I am a Chinese farmer. Uh, I, uh, yeah, we started Shangri-La Farms together and uh, soon after, unfortunately, I had to go back to university and finish up. And uh, so I was in Vancouver and while I was there, uh, completely taken up by the idea of being an entrepreneur and working in social business. I, well, we started a uh, greenhouse growing, uh, growing production, uh, growing leafy uh, greens and edible flowers. And uh, you know, simultaneously I was finishing a degree that focused on Chinese language. So in that way I guess I am a Chinese farmer. Um, so my experience in agriculture was really, really informative and it really helped me in a lot of ways. Uh, and primarily it's because I, I realized firsthand how difficult it is to be a farmer. You really have an endless amount of tasks to do, and it's so like there's so many things, and by the end of the day you're exhausted. Like, you don't really have the time or the the energy to focus on building the next stages, and uh, you know if you're unable to build a brand, then your your product in the end is still just a commodity, and so then it, you know the reward is quite low. Um, so you know marketing is obviously very important. So when I got back to China and I started working again in Shangri-La Farms, I, uh, you know, I started campaigning for fair trade. This is really important to me. So I started going to talks and participating in a variety of different platforms. I talked at universities, I talked at Sohu, and 
you know, like these were all talks centered around social responsibility in some form or the other. But at the same time, I found that the audience uh, really lacked a lot of knowledge about social business and fair trade and these concepts. And so I figured, you know, if this is if this is like the informed crowd, then what about everybody else? You know, there's there's a huge gap of knowledge in uh, the mainstream, uh, you know, society. So I started thinking about it more and more. And, you know, like I was kind of like trying to take different approaches. So I started looking at consumers and what the average consumer is like here in China. And people are very, very concerned with pricing. Pricing is number one, it needs to be cheap. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, when you talk to them and you start explaining the values of fair trade and the values of social responsibility, you know, generally speaking, they're quite all right with adding a few more renminbi onto the final price of the, of the product. Um, but the point is that they need to know about it. So how do you, as like a small group, communicate this, this rather big message with a very large population? And so I started, you know, being curious. I started asking around, like, what do you guys pay attention to? What do you watch? You know, like, what, what is there out there on TV that you like? And really, unfortunately, it kept leading me back to the same place over and over again. And that was China's number one dating show, Fei Chong Wu Rong. So I entered as a as a contestant, and <laughs> it was really it was really a daunting experience. It was just me, 24 girls, and they're all grilling me, asking all these different questions, and really trying to make me slip. But um, you know, I tried to present all my information, uh, all regarding social responsibility. Uh, you know, being uh, giving back to uh, society, giving back to, to agriculture, and uh, you know, actually, it had a very good effect. Um, from there, in the aftermath, we created a social network following of around 20,000 people who we actively engage in talks about social responsibility, the triple bottom line, and social enterprise in general. Uh, so, you know, it's it's been a really amazing and crazy adventure, and uh, we continuously learn so much about you know what we're you know what this is to, uh, what it is to do what we do and uh, yeah it's uh, it's really about finding this balance and we're very lucky to have the balance of skill sets that we do um, yeah we've, we've had to be very creative in how we go about uh, presenting our products so we've had to be very creative about how we kind of find all that balance and uh, yeah it's been an incredible adventure and uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If there's one thing I can say, though, yes, you must have the right social entrepreneurship. You must have this. You might have that. But you've got to have a really, really, really good product. And over the last week, I have been eating and drinking their honey on all sorts of things. It is fabulous. We had a group here with their coffee, and everybody thought it was spectacular. So it's about the quality of what you create, and I really congratulate you, and good luck. Thank you very much.